a phone that offers the full power of 5G across all new devices. This is just the first step toward a new generation of meaningful mobile experiences. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce the brand new For all of you joining us online for the first time ever, Unpacked is being captured and streamed with the amazing Galaxy S20. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage head of U.S. Mobile Product Management, Drew Blackard. Great to be here in San Francisco. Last month marked the start of a new decade. And at Samsung, we are really looking forward to the next 10 years of Galaxy innovation. With that in mind, we've been working hard to create devices that are built for the way that we live our lives today. Our vision for the next decade of Galaxy all starts with 5G. Just last year, we unveiled five new 5G smartphones worldwide. In Korea alone, we helped bring 100,000 base stations online. And we've engineered new 5G chipsets that are smaller, cheaper, and power efficient. 5G will completely change how we communicate, how we game, and how we keep in touch with the world around us. It'll work with AI to enhance every aspect of our smartphones. And it'll connect thousands of devices through our SmartThings platform while protecting our privacy. And last year, we were just getting started. Simply put, this is the year of Galaxy 5G. It begins right now in 2020, right here with a Galaxy S20. Today, we're more social than ever, and we communicate and express ourselves with images, not just words. That means our smartphones need one thing above all else, a powerful camera. We spent months asking thousands of smartphone users across the world when it came to camera what mattered most. And no matter who we asked or where they lived, we got the same answer, quality, quality, quality. Now, we can all take great photos under perfect conditions, bright outdoor lighting, not too close, not too far, not too much movement. But in practice, it rarely works out that way. We take pictures at concerts, at kids' soccer games, at graduations. And we want to be able to capture those moments perfectly, too, even if the conditions aren't perfect. After all, it's 2020. We rely on our phones to document and share our entire lives. So we rebuilt the Galaxy S20's entire camera system to change the way we capture. The key to capturing a high quality photo is a high resolution camera, because the higher the resolution, the more detail you can capture and the more you can see. Maybe you're taking a picture and you notice something interesting in the background, so you pinch in to get a better look. But as you get closer, the image gets pixelated. At 64 megapixels, 
S20's revolutionary camera system takes smartphone photography to the next level. So when you need to crop an image, don't worry. S20's resolution is so sharp that even when you do crop, your photo remains crisp and clear. Of course, high resolution isn't just useful for viewing pictures, it's also useful when you're taking them. When you need to get closer or want the subject to be the only thing in the frame, you need zoom. And with Galaxy S20 Space Zoom, you can get up to 30 times closer. So, so if there's something that's cool from far away, you can still zoom in, get a high quality shot. Samsung cameras are the best in the business, not just because of the game-changing hardware, but because of their intelligence. With AI, you can use this revolutionary camera to the fullest. Think about it. There's those times when you want to capture the moment, but by the time you've decided on the right camera mode, the moment's gone. With single take mode, S20 uses AI to capture different versions of that exact same moment, using each of its different cameras. Just take a short clip up to 10 seconds, and single take captures different versions of that game winning goal. Live focus, boomerang video, ultra wide, and a lot more. Then when you're done shooting, it gives you a handful of those best shots so you can pick your favorites. My wife and I are really excited about this one. We've got 14 month old twins at home, and they never sit still for a photo. So now we'll never have to worry about missing the moment. And your Galaxy S20 uses AI to make it even easier to keep your photos organized. It groups your content, making your gallery easier to navigate, and also lets you create subgroups to organize your photos however you want. You can easily search your photos, and if you identify people that keep popping up, S20 will be able to pick them out automatically. With the Galaxy S20, we've created a phone that will change photography. But we know that photos are only one part of the camera experience. More and more, we're using video to communicate, whether it's sharing through our Instagram stories, capturing special moments, or creating content of our own. For years, Samsung has led the market in 8K TV technology. And today, we're bringing that expertise to mobile. Thanks to S20's super high resolution, you can capture videos in stunning 8K. That's right. 8K is the future of video, and now you can shoot it yourself right from your phone. In fact, we built an entire 8K ecosystem. You can shoot 8K footage from the camera in your pocket, upload it to YouTube over 5G network, and use TapView to cast it to your 8K QLED TV. That way, you can enjoy your high-quality video right on the big screen. From capture to casting, from your phone to your TV, it's a full 8K experience. To truly understand how this 8K ecosystem comes together, you've got to see it for yourself. So with the help of filmmaker and adventure Sam Evans, let's take a look. Hey, everyone. I'm Sam, and I'm a content creator from Australia. I'm here in the product demo zone to show you exactly how the S20 works. So you've already heard a lot about it, but you really have to see it in action. Actually, you already have. Do you remember the video you saw earlier, the one with the cable cars and the Golden Gate Bridge moving through San Francisco? I actually shot that whole film on the S20. I'm so amazed by what this phone can do. So I've traveled around San Francisco with the S20 and managed to get some pretty incredible footage. For me, 8K footage is a game changer. With the extra resolution, it allows me to edit my footage exactly the way I want. Here's some 8K footage I captured out of San Francisco. Looks great, right? And worth sharing, don't you think? That's super easy. I can share with my friends by uploading it directly to YouTube without losing any of the original quality. I already uploaded some 8K footage to show you how it looks. Now, we can watch this on the phone or using the YouTube app on an 8K QLED TV, we can watch it there. Let's check it out. So cool. Capture a moment in 8K, share it with your friends, watch it together, all through the S20. Check it out for yourself. After the show, come on down to the product exceeding zone and see it for yourself. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, Drew. 
Thanks, Sam. 8K video is stunning. The best quality for your best memories. It takes smartphone recording to a whole new level. And it opens the door to some entirely new experiences that have never before been possible on a smartphone. Record a video, then scroll through the footage to find the perfect moment. And with a single click, you'll get a 33 megapixel still photo with amazing resolution. You can crop any frame and always get a high quality picture. With 8K, S20 revolutionizes your photo and video experience. And it's designed for pro-grade filmmaking. With pro mode, you can adjust aperture, exposure, and settings that you usually have control over with a DSLR. We even enhance super steady mode, so you can take sharper videos on the go, thanks to AI motion analysis and an anti-rolling stabilizer. This camera isn't just good, it's in a class of its own, right down to its performance specs. You've got a powerful processor, an all-day battery, and thanks to the Galaxy S20's incredible storage capacity, up to a terabyte and a half using a micro SD card, you'll have plenty of room for all your favorite photos and videos. And you can share those photos and videos more easily than ever, too. With S20, you can share files with up to five friends at the same time without even having to pair your devices. Every incredible innovation you've heard about so far, from 8K video to promo to sharing, is available on all three models of the Galaxy S20 series. Because we don't believe in compromising when it comes to camera quality. And for the people who want even more, the serious professional photographers who need the best of the best, we're proud to introduce the Galaxy S20 Ultra. This device has the largest, most powerful image sensor we've ever put on a smartphone. You want high resolution, it has an unbelievable 108 megapixel AI camera. So you can capture scenes with a level of detail you've never experienced. With a camera this high quality, you don't just get one picture. Zoom in any one part and a new world comes to light. You practically get a photo album's worth of detail in a single shot. We rebuilt the entire camera system with brand new sensors to help you focus quickly and accurately. The S20 Ultra takes multiple frames using software along with hardware to merge them all into one high quality photo. And it does it all in a tenth of a second, much faster than any smartphone out there. This technology combined with a bright night sensor means you'll get bright, accurate pictures even in low light. All three models of the S20 take amazing low light photos, but the S20 Ultra takes it even further. This phone takes some of the best, brightest photos I've ever seen. That's because Samsung's pioneering nonobinning technology combines nine pixels into one, all at the sensor level using AI. That just means that each pixel is larger than ever before and can capture three times more light in every image. S20 Ultra comes with an advanced, cutting-edge zoom function. See, for camera zoom, you usually need more focal length, which means a bulkier device. But when it comes to smartphones, that isn't a great option. You want the device to stay as thin as possible. So we built it with a folded lens. When the light enters the telelens, it's refracted at an angle, producing a powerful zoom effect. The folded lens allows for up to 10x hybrid optic zoom. Now multiply that with a 10x digital zoom, and you can magnify a shot up to 100 times. That's what you'd expect from a telescope. To show us just how powerful the S20 Ultra Zoom is, we invited Colin and Samir to try it out for themselves. Here, let's check it out. What's up, everyone? I'm Colin. And I'm Samir, and we're coming to you here at Hawk Hill. Now, we've been making YouTube videos and telling stories together for a long time. I mean, we shot our first video over eight years ago. And as we've evolved as filmmakers and storytellers, our gear has evolved too. Today, we travel around with bags, big cameras, and bulky lenses. But at the end of the day, the story is what matters most. And we need a versatile camera that can travel anywhere with us and capture it all. That's why we're so excited about the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Okay, so check this out. We're gonna shoot this scene right here on the ultra wide mode. So right here this is one of the best views of San Francisco. You got the city in the background, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, and over there, that tiny dot on the left side of your screen, that's Alcatraz. 
Okay, you're telling me that that dot is Alcatraz. Nah, that's exactly what I'm telling you, Colin. That is Alcatraz. If you're so sure, prove it. Okay, well, I'm gonna get you closer and I'm gonna prove that to you. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Check this out. Whoa, that's incredible. That's Alcatraz at 30 times zoom. So that tiny dot in frame that I just showed you now fills the entire screen. Let me show you where we started from. Whoa, unbelievable. Now normally to get a shot like that, we would have to swap lenses. But now we can get this ultra wide you're looking at as well as that close up all with a single device. Samir, I've got a question for you. What's up, Colin? From where we are, can you spot the Palace of Fine Arts? You where the show's happening right now? Yes. Uh, no, man, I don't, I don't think so. You still looking? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still looking, man. It's, it's far. You're not going to find it. That's crazy. Let me show you. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see it. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, that's crazy. That's the Palace of Whoa. Fine Arts at 100 times zoom. Wait, that's amazing. I can barely see it over here. And now I'm going to bring it back out to the ultra wide. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, the craziest part of all of this to me is that you can go from ultra wide to 100 times zoom and back all with a phone. With the S20 Ultra's 100 times zoom, you now have the most versatile storytelling tool that fits right in your pocket. I mean, eight years ago, when we first started making YouTube videos and telling stories, we could have never imagined having a device like this. This camera will change photography and storytelling forever. And we can't wait for all of you to get your hands on it. So that's it for us up here at Hawk Hill. We hope you enjoyed the demo and we will see all of you after the show. Thanks guys. Amazing, right? No matter which model of the S20 series you choose, we've changed the way you capture. Cameras are how we turn moments into memories and that goes for this show too. As TM mentioned earlier, we're streaming today's event with S20 devices. Give it up for the camera crew. Pretty incredible. So you just saw what Colin and Tamir could do with an S20. And earlier you saw Sam's demo, also filmed with one. Now, let's see what happens when you put an S20 in the hands of Academy Award winning director, Jimmy Chin. Hi, my name is Jimmy Chin, and I'm a Team Galaxy member. We are in Jackson Hall, Wyoming, and I have lived here for the last 20 years. One of the reasons I really love Jackson is because of the mountains. So when I come home, I really just want to be able to be in the mountains in my own space, in my own time. But the landscape is so inspiring, it's hard for me to stop shooting and creating content. To be able to shoot 8K on the Galaxy S20 Ultra is extraordinary. Being a photographer and a filmmaker, the quality of the images or the footage is something I'm kind of obsessed with. So it's nice to just be able to shoot with my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. You know, just something I can put in my pocket. For me to have creative freedom, it's often about having the right tool. Something that allows me to be spontaneous and to be able to capture an experience in the moment and on the fly. That's what the Galaxy does for me. Incredible. And it was all shot with the S20 series. We're really excited to have Jimmy on board. He's one of the most talented storytellers out there. And behind every great story is a creator. At Samsung, we empower those creators to break barriers, defy odds, and push the limits of creativity through technology. They inspire us, and they inspire Netflix. So together, we're helping a group of Netflix creators tell companion and bonus stories based on their movies and shows, all with the help of S20's new state-of-the-art camera system. To tell you more about our new partnership, please welcome Netflix CMO, Jackie Lee Joe. Thank you so much, Drew. It's so great to be here today at this year's Unpacked. Netflix and Samsung have a long-standing, decade-long relationship. 
And at every step of the way, it's been all about working to create the best entertainment viewing experience for our members. We've worked together on many initiatives over the years. Two recent examples include tracking down Breaking Bad's Hugh Babineau together as part of a joint marketing campaign. He's finally out of the safe house, by the way. And we even got Ryan Reynolds in on the action by making an ad for QLED that was actually an ad for Six Underground, that was actually, not so secretly, an ad for Aviation Gin. So it's been a lot of fun. And today, we're here to announce the next stage in this partnership. Today, Netflix is being announced as Samsung's mobile entertainment partner. The mission of this partnership? To make the Netflix viewing experience on Samsung Mobile the absolute best it can be. This means that even more users can enjoy our best-in-class stories across all genres through even better product integration with Galaxy mobile devices. And to make it even more exciting, in the coming months, Samsung mobile users will have access to a whole host of new and exciting bonus content based on some of your favorite Netflix originals, accessible through Samsung Daily and Samsung Channels. The content will shine a light on our diverse mix of creators from all around the world, a selection of whom will be handed a Galaxy S20 to shoot this content for themselves, offering them the freedom to continue inventing new ways to tell stories their way. You can expect to hear from the minds behind great stories like Narcos, Centenia, Elite, as well as from our team behind Netflix is a Joke, and so many more. We can't wait to see what they come back with. We believe this significant partnership will provide millions of Samsung mobile users across the globe the best mobile entertainment experience and make discovering new stories around the world easier than ever. After all, great stories come from anywhere and to be loved everywhere. Thank you. Back to you, Drew. Netflix is changing the way we access and watch content and creating new movies and shows for us to enjoy every day. We are thrilled to partner with Netflix to help lead those innovations and reimagine entertainment together. We can't wait to see what they produce. In the meantime, though, we're making it easier to find the content you want right now. Let's say you're looking for a new movie or show. With S20, you'll be able to ask Bixby to play Stranger Things or Type a title right into your phone's search bar. In seconds, it'll come up on your Netflix app. If you're looking for something new, no problem. We've integrated Netflix on your Samsung Daily page to offer recommendations based on what you already watch. And with 5G, you'll be able to take your entertainment anywhere you go. If you're boarding a plane but forgot to download a movie or show, don't worry. With 5G, you can download them in a flash. Because that's what mobile entertainment is all about. Getting the content you want when you want it. You've seen how S20's camera helps you capture content of your own. You've seen how it helps professionals bring new stories to life. And next, you'll see how it helps you communicate with the people in your life. To tell you more, please welcome my friend and colleague, David Park. Thanks, Drew. How's everyone doing today? It's so great to be here at Unpacked. At their core, phones have always been built to help us communicate, first through calls, then through texting, then through social media. We share our lives through Instagram stories and bond over viral videos. But today, communication isn't enough. We want to forge connections. And just as we're using our phone cameras to capture more and more videos, we are using
If you ever buy anything from Apple, you should use Wikibuy. It's a browser extension that automatically applies coupon codes. What's up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is your first look at Samsung's new highest end flagship. The one we've been talking about, the one the rumors focused on, it's here. It's the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now there's a whole new lineup of Samsung phones all coming out at once. I've dropped an entire separate video on the Galaxy S20 and Galaxy S20 Plus, which are the true successors to the S10 and S10 Plus. Matter of fact, watch that video first. And when you're done watching that, come back to this one and brace yourself because pretty much everything I say here is gonna be based off of that video. So go ahead, pause this one and then come back, I'll wait. Hey, what's up guys, I'm KBHD here and this is your first look at the brand new Samsung Galaxy S20 and Galaxy S20 Plus. Now there's a whole new lineup of Samsung phones out right now. They're going all out for 2020, clearly. So we have the Galaxy S20, the Galaxy S20 Plus, and a new Galaxy S20 Ultra. I've dropped an entire separate video on that S20 Ultra. It's the new pro version in their lineup. But that phone starts, starts at $1399. And we don't all have a G and a half to spend on a new phone, no matter how nice it is. So these are the true successors to the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus, the S20 and S20 Plus. And to me, this is actually one of the biggest jumps up I've seen Samsung take with their phones. Literally everything you can think of is upgraded and they've taken the biggest jumps in the most important areas of the phone. So the screen, the battery, and the cameras. So let's start with the screen. These are now 6.2 inch and 6.7 inch displays respectively, and they are 120 Hertz quad HD OLED displays. So super high resolution, HDR plus, and super responsive high refresh rate screens. This is the train I've been telling you guys flagships are all gonna get on in 2020. And to match that super high refresh rate, Samsung has also doubled the touch sensitivity to a 240 hertz sample rate, meaning it responds to touch input twice as fast. And the whole new speed difference is instantly noticeable. Now, obviously it's still tough for me to show you guys in this a 30 FPS YouTube video, but yeah, literally everything from swiping around the UI to opening and closing apps and scrolling and eventually, of course, gaming, everything will look and feel smoother. And I think Samsung has also tweaked some of these animations in one UI to be a bit shorter and snappier too. So you can easily tell it feels way smoother than 60 hertz, and I can actually tell the difference versus 90 as well, which I've gotten used to. Hey, uh, Editor Marquez here real quick with a little message, a little asterisk. So Galaxy S20s at 120 hertz are actually going to be limited to 1080p, not full resolution 1440p. So this is something I just found out later after the briefing. I didn't even really notice while using it. But if you get the phone out the box, it will be at 1440p and at 60 hertz. And when you go into the settings to change it to move it up to 120 hertz, it'll lock you at 1080p, probably to save battery life and power and things like that. Small asterisk on what we've learned about the phone, but figured I'd let you know. Back to the video. So I'm super happy about the screen. And on top of all that, there's now uh, the center hole punch you can see, which I actually prefer because unlike the corners, there's usually nothing being blocked in the middle. And it's now actually flatter, which is so unlike Samsung because they've always been the ones to push the curved glass melting over the sides. But hey, new decade, new Samsung. Now this display doesn't melt over the edge nearly as much or kind of at all. It's much more flat and in my opinion, much more usable. And they still have the ultrasonic fingerprint reader, of course, underneath the display. Now let's talk about battery for a second. They have increased the battery sizes on all these phones by a healthy amount too. So it's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery on the smaller S20 and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery on the S20 Plus. So they're not trying to make these phones super razor thin, which is great. They're actually just a tiny bit thicker, but it's also probably because with a huge, bright 120 Hertz display, you're gonna want all the battery you can get. So this is something we're gonna have to test, of course, when we get the phone in for the full review, but I'm at least glad to see on the spec sheet, much larger cells. Plus there's still 25 watt fast charging with that charger included in the box and wireless charging too. Uh, and while we're at it, let's hit the specs. Boom, there you go. High-end CPU, 
an insane 12 gigabytes of RAM on all of them, expandable storage, IP68 certified. I mean, these phones are complete on the spec sheet. Not quite as wild as the S20 Ultra, but still no big shortcomings as you'd expect from a Samsung flagship. And the entire lineup is also all 5G capable, but I don't think this is quite a game changer as much as some people will try to make it out to be. Uh, you know, the S20 and S20 Plus, they will not do millimeter wave, so only sub six 5G. And so it'll say 5G in the corner, but we talked about this in a previous video. It's only gonna be up to about 20% faster than good 4G on a good day. And so I wouldn't buy this phone just for the 5G. So anyway, let's hit the last and probably most important new piece of these new phones with the Galaxy S20, and that is the cameras. They are a huge focus for Samsung in these new phones this year, pun intended. And I haven't seen the unpacked slideshow slides yet. I'm recording this before that, but I'd be willing to bet that probably half of them, at least half, are about cameras. So you're looking at a new triple camera setup for the S20, and the S20 Plus has room for an extra depth sensor, but otherwise they're the same things here, with a new 12 megapixel main sensor at f1.8. Then there's a 3X 64 megapixel telephoto camera at f2, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide at f2.2. And they are all physically larger sensors than last year, which is great for pretty much everything, light sensitivity, low light performance, and anything else basically to do with photography. And there's some serious zoom capabilities, not just optical zoom, but with software giving you a 10X multiplier, that's gonna give you a comfortable 30X hybrid zoom. And I know this isn't a video about the ultra, but that phone has a 10X zoom which means the hybrid zoom with software will go up to 100X, which is ridiculous. Um, but they'll call all of this space zoom. It could have called it galaxy zoom, but I guess that works as well. But the nice cherry on top of all of this is they're all capable of 8K 24 FPS video across the whole lineup. Now, 8K video in a smartphone camera sounds incredible. Sounds like something I'd put in my dream phone, but there is a catch. 4K was already big, but 8K video is 33 megapixels per frame, which is awesome because you can you get the flexibility of being able to pull 33 megapixel stills from a video. But to get that, you have to have a window of a sensor big enough to shoot 8K video, which means you need at least a 33 megapixel sensor. But the main camera on these phones, like I mentioned, is that 12 megapixel sensor. It's the 3X telephoto that's 64 megapixels. So when you go into the settings and turn the video resolution to 8K like I did, that's gonna be coming from that telephoto camera, not the main camera. So it's gonna punch in a bit, as you can tell, which definitely drops it a bit on the convenience side. Also, 8K doesn't support tracking autofocus or video effects, some things to note as it says here in the settings. So they do technically shoot 8K, yes, but it's not from the main sensor, it's punched in. There's just a little bit extra to think about when maxing out video on these phones. So it's not like the dream world where we can stream 8K over 5G to YouTube without even thinking about it. Just not quite there yet. Either way though, as you can tell, with the entire rest of this phone, not a whole lot to dislike. Even a lot of the little stuff they changed, I'm liking too. They changed the button situation, so now the buttons have moved back over to the right-hand side, and the dedicated Bixby button is gone. Uh, they're also pretty lightweight phones as well. Despite their size and the bigger batteries, I was impressed with how good they feel in the hand and how light they are compared to some other big phones. And Samsung's One UI 2.0 has some neat improvements as well. Now, I'd be lying if I said I loved it. Um, it's still far from my favorite flavor of Android, but there's still things like building a zoom preview into the camera app now. So when you're zoomed in super far, you still get that preview in the top left of what the hell you're zooming into, which is super useful. And there's other stuff like Spotify now integrated into Bixby routines and HD Google Duo video chat built natively into the dialer and some other stuff like the subtle new animations. And there's also a new single take mode in the camera it's like the opposite of pro mode. Basically, instead of you doing all the hard work of taking several photos and videos, you just hit the shutter button once and point it at some action, and it'll decide for you when to take photos and videos based on you know when eyes are open and faces are smiling and stuff. That seems kind of cool, but this isn't something I think I'll ever use. Call me crazy, but I like taking the photos myself. But at the end of the day, if you look back at this whole thing, you go down the spec sheet and everything they've done with this phone, it's hard to find anything you could consider a weakness 
or a complaint or a downside or a bad thing about this phone, aside from maybe the price. Now, of course, a lot of this is on paper and based on like the two hours that I spent with this phone getting this footage, but honestly, I'm excited to review this phone. Definitely subscribe to- Don't overpay for Adidas. Wikibuy can save you money. It's a browser extension that automatically applies coupon codes to your shopping cart. It's super easy to use and it's free. So do yourself and your wallet a favor and try Wikibuy. Okay, welcome back. So now that you've seen the Galaxy S20 and S20 Plus, they've come out with this S20 Ultra, which is this crazy, spec king, bleeding edge, highest end possible phone they could make on paper. And it's also the most expensive, starting at 1400 bucks. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you get for that money. So the design, as you can see, still clearly in the S20 family. And in fact, you can pretty much take everything from the S20s. That still applies here. Same design, same water resistance, same materials, same colors. But uh, just bump everything up a notch from excellent to Insane, <laughs> literally everything. The display is a little bit bigger. It's a 6.9 inch, 120 Hertz, quad HD OLED display, which is nuts. Uh, it's bigger than any Galaxy Note they've ever made. It's just absolutely massive to have that nearly seven inch screen in your pocket. Remember, the iPad mini had a 7.9 inch display. So this is huge. And then with the super thin bezels and the small center hole punch cutout, I think it's safe to say this is the best display on a phone right now, or when it comes out. It also has that 240 hertz touch response to match, which is twice as fast as before, and you can absolutely notice all this stuff as different from any slower display. I've said it before, it's hard to show the difference in a 30 FPS YouTube video, but in person, the smoothness is incredible. And then this phone is also physically bigger in a bunch of other ways too, as you could tell. The main one being the battery. It's a five thousand milliamp hour battery now in the S20 Ultra, which sounds pretty impressive, but the more you think about it, the more that sounds like about right to power a nearly seven inch, 120 hertz bright OLED display. So they got that bigger battery in there and the phone is a bit thicker too. Now it's not like a chunkster like the, you know, the ROG phone or anything like that, but you can see it's got some more size to it. And on top of that, literally, uh, the camera bump is a bit thicker on the S20 Ultra. It's actually more of like a double camera bump, like a plateau with another bump on top of it. Uh, it's not a huge deal and it doesn't actually really change the way you use the phone, but I figured I'd point that out if you care a lot about the way it rocks on a table. But we'll talk more about the cameras in a little bit. The specs are also bigger, if you could believe that. Same Snapdragon 865 and 128 gigs of base storage, but again, up to half a terabyte internal plus micro SD card expansion for up to another terabyte and 12 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is just hilarious on a phone. And the Ultra also supports up to 45 watt fast charging, unlike the 25 watt max of the S20s and what's included in the box. I also mentioned in the S20 video that the whole lineup now is 5G capable, which is true, but now the S20 and S20 Plus are just doing sub six where the S20 Ultra also adds millimeter wave on top of this. So, I mean, this affects a very small number of people. So if you're in that small group of people, good to know, but I probably still wouldn't buy this phone just for 5G. But hey, if you're in that group, Good to know. So they keep stacking little extra things here and there on top of the already impressive S20s, which brings us to, I guess, the most important part of the phone, the most ultra part of the phone, which is those cameras. So you're getting a quad camera setup on the back again, but it is, again, stepped up from the S20s. So now on the S20 Ultra, the main camera is a 108 megapixel sensor. Uh, I made a whole video about this already, and I'll, I'll link it below. Then you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a depth sensor, and then this square one, or rectangular one at the bottom here that says space zoom, that is your 48 megapixel 10X hybrid optic telephoto lens. So to do this, they've turned the lens inside the phone sideways, kind of very similar to what we saw Huawei do with their periscope lens. Samsung's calling theirs a folded zoom lens but basically just know it's a solid amount of glass and mirrors making this amount of zoom possible. And yeah, 10X zoom plus 
the 10x multiplier of software will get you a ridiculous 100x hybrid zoom. And on top of all of that, you do get 8K 24 FPS video on the main camera without the punch in that I talked about with the regular S20. Oh, and the selfie camera on the front goes from 10 megapixels to 40 megapixels. Okay then. There's a lot of just big numbers happening here. Uh, I don't know how much you're actually gonna use 100 times zoom. I don't know what you're doing with your periscope out your window with your smartphone camera, I don't know. But you're able to do that. And 100 megapixels and all this stuff, I think this number on paper <laughs> offers the biggest window, possible bro? delta between what we're seeing what on paper and what the actual experience camera, can be. Meaning, I've preached for years that you don't need big numbers to give a good experience. Pixel and iPhone for years have had the best smartphone cameras with 12 megapixel cameras. So does Samsung dropping a 108 megapixel camera that just does pixel binning when it needs to be 12 megapixels automatically mean it's better? No, of course not. There's still all kinds of other things. There's focus speed and dynamic range and color science and all this other stuff. So it's just, it's interesting to see. But if we're being real, the rest of the stuff about this phone, I kind of already feel like I know is great. You know, the 120 Hertz display is awesome. And the generally familiar design, I think is still nice too. It is definitely still a fingerprint magnet, but I like the new button layout. Uh, I like the fact that they're going back to a much flatter display instead of curving over the edges. Just a lot of stuff like that all in one place, plus the software improvements, all make it really hard to not like this phone. Basically, Ultra is Samsung's version of Pro. Like, they don't throw that Pro word around as gratuitously as some other manufacturers do right now, but this is their top of the line in all the same ways. And I have a pretty good feeling all these numbers, 120 hertz, 45 watts, 5,000 milliamp hours, 16 gigs, 108 megapixels, like they should translate pretty well. Now the question of will they all come together to be worth that $13.99 starting price? That's something that remains to be seen. That's what we're gonna figure out when we get it in hand and test it for the full review. So definitely get subscribed to see that if you haven't already, but uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But until the next one, feel free to let me know which one are you guys more into? Is it the Ultra or the regular S20s? Or maybe it's the flippy screen one. Leave a comment, let me know. Thanks for watching, catch you guys later. Peace. If you ever buy anything from Apple, you should use Hey. Hey. What I miss.